Okay guys, here we are back on another laser video. This time we are loading up, as you see here, this 2.5G high acceleration machine that's headed out to Colorado Springs, Colorado, up to Adam. And in the next clips, you'll see us up there with Adam right in. installing his machine. So Adam elected to get this three kilowatt 2.5G machine and the eight foot press brake and an air compressor and all the other stuff that comes with the machine you can see it loaded up on a step deck conestoga rig here worked out great so me and my son matt made the drive from texas out to colorado and man i gotta say one of the things about making these trips is when i go east you know, especially up to the northeast, I got to drive through Memphis. It's brutal. I hate that drive. There's so many bad roads. And when you go west, it's nothing but wide open roads, you know, uh, beautiful scenery. Um, it's just a pleasure to go west for sure. So most of the time I try to plan it with the customer to have most of the electrical done before we get there. And certainly that was the case with Adam. He pretty much had everything kind of where we needed it. And then just a matter of making the final connections. You see Matt here in the video, uh, wiring up the transformer, just connecting it to the laser. Well, you know the old saying, it's always something. And it certainly was the case with this one. We had this machine running in our shop, cutting beautifully all the alarms and error solved running perfectly get up here get ready to install it boot the machine up and as you can see it's not homing itself correctly it's given an error message about slippage in the motor now it sounds pretty severe um a little bit you know on the scary side but as it worked out it turned out to be something pretty basic with the way the hard and soft limits were set up and why it didn't do this in our shop and now it's doing it there who knows but we got it going and kept on moving down the line Listen to the sound difference here. Not on, not in, on the engraving, but the, the actual cut. So this was a uh, three sixteenths hot rolled steel and we were cutting this, this with compressed air. Anytime you cut this with a three kilowatt on compressed air, you're going to get a little burr on it. But you know, we, we dialed in all the parameters for oxygen and compressed air, but this is going to be a little box that we're going to form up on the brake and you'll see that here in a second. But you can see we got a pretty nice uh, result here with the uh, compressed air cutting. So just a heads up for the rest of this year, pretty for the most part, I'm going to, uh, hold off on installing any more lasers. I do have the next two, three weeks uh, to get cleared out of backlog. And then after that, I won't be taking any new orders, new orders for a while. But press brakes, we have many, many in stock. And you see Adam uh, here forming up this box uh, using a two inch die, a little mini gooseneck punch. And we were just, you know, we just whipped this up right on the uh, computer of the, of the laser, no CAD, just drew it right up in the hype cut. And uh, so it was a little tight in the corners, but for the most part, for just something quick, you know, to kind of demo the machine and do a little training with, it really worked out well. Benforce Brakes is my website for the press brakes. So benforcebrakes.com. Go! 
No, you didn't. Yeah, there's a, a pretty, you know, steep learning curve with getting a new laser on day one. You know, a lot going on with, uh, you know, operating the machine, the remote control, just getting the feel for things. And, you know, the hardest part about it all is just dialing in the cut settings. And if you're new to it, it's more complicated than you think. But if you've been doing it for two years, three years, uh, most people kind of get the hang of it and get to where they can do it pretty good. This is a pretty neat material. This was some uh, really thin aluminum, like 050 or 060 aluminum, and it had a painted coating on it. And so we were just doing in some engraving uh, and we cut the same outside shape that we bent earlier and then also bent this one on the press break uh, in, into the same box shape. So it turned out pretty cool. Needed just a little bit more clearance in the corners, but really pretty slick. Mm -hmm. So this has to be one of the most cool and interesting laser installs I've done. Colorado Springs, Colorado. You can see the, uh, you know, what is that, Mount Fuji or Mount Everest or something in the background. Um, car dealership row. I mean, this whole street all the way down through here, there must be 50 dealerships. No kidding, no joke. And if you're around this area, you probably know what I'm talking about. So back in this part, they've got an area that, um, where they had some space and they wanted to set up, you know, like a prototyping area. So we have a three kilowatt, 2.5 G high acceleration fiber laser, an air compressor, and a press break in here. So let's take a look. So this is the Rocky 15 kilowatt, 20 horsepower, 20 bar or 290 PSI laser rated air compressor. Got a built in dryer. It's got a built in external. You can see the external filtering there that filters between the compressor and the tank. And then after the tank, before it goes into the dryer, so lots of filtering, lots of uh, drying. Now I think it's always important to show you the members of management. And then here's the, uh, the president and vice president of the company. And they, they, of course, take you on tours. When you walk in, they jump on top of you and make sure you go to follow you everywhere you go. So that was the uh, laser and the air compressor you saw. And here's the uh, Ben Force 8 foot, 145 ton, 4 plus 1 axis CNC servo brake. We'll show you this in action. We'll show you the laser in action. You can see we got a manual mill here. Got a Precision Matthews lathe. A little mini mill, Precision Matthews. 
And if you go out into this area, this takes you out into the dealership service bay. It didn't run the D film. One of the things people always tell me when they contact me about buying a laser is I've got a CNC plasma table as if that kind of pre-qualifies you to be an expert on a laser and man it couldn't be further from the truth the easy part about the lasers opening files and you know running the machine it's a breeze it's better than any plasma table i've ever seen but the dialing in of the cut quality and keeping it dialed in is tricky so if you're new to lasers or you've just bought a laser from someone else or imported one and you're struggling with cut quality, check, check out my website in the consulting and training session. I have videos there for sale to teach you how to dial in your laser and get these kind of results. Big thanks to Adam and his family and his guys there. Got to meet a few of his guys and uh, went out to dinner with him and his wife one night. Really just great people. And and honestly, you know, the uh, that was actually put to the test, you know, when I say great people. Uh, because we had some stuff happen, you know, in Adam getting this laser that was probably about the worst possible thing you could have happen in the middle of a transaction like this. And uh, it was definitely not his fault. It was only probably about five percent my fault uh mostly not my fault either it just something bad happened and if this had been someone else or you know other than him and, and possibly me uh it could have been a real disaster but both of us handled it with the uh a high level of class and patience and perseverance and in the end it all worked its way out and i don't want to disclose what it is but i really appreciate adam's uh patience and support and just commitment to doing whatever to make it right and that was my commitment you know whatever it takes let's make it right and um adam's super happy with the machine and uh just another great friend that i've met and looking forward to hopefully seeing him again in the future thanks guys see ya